these plants are absolutely thriving here, but there's no sun, no soil. That's right. So how do we do that? Mm. <laughs> Uh, we, the technical group that, that, that came up with this idea to begin with, determined that plants only need two wavelengths of light, blue and red. That's chlorophyll A and B. So that's, that's basically what drives plants to grow. So you, you've got artificial sunlight that specializes in what the plants need only. Now the second problem is how do you get rid of the soil? And actually what soil is is a matrix. It's not actually eaten by the plants. What they do is they suck up water that's in between the particles of soil. So the soil never disappears, the water does. That's why you have to eat watering plants. So here, we've included the nutrients into water and we've actually watered the roots and they're perfectly happy to live like this. Mm. Artificial sun, nutrients of, their ch of our choice that match exactly what they need. And the next thing you know, you've got plants growing twice as fast as they do outside. And your vision is, you can put stacks and stacks and stacks of these in skyscrapers growing food. Yes. Simple. Mm. That's, that's the idea. It's, it's really stupid simple, but that's exactly what we should be doing. What are they using them for here? There's mm. a more scientific application for these plants. That's right. This, this facility specializes in using plants to produce substances of medical importance for people. So in one case, they were using a plant related to the tobacco plant to produce a virus-like particle which could be used as a vaccine against influenza. The H1N1 strain of influenza, which is very common throughout the world, is a great demand for the vaccine, very difficult to produce in duck eggs and chicken eggs. Piece of cake in a plant. So for every duck egg or chicken egg, you get one dose of vaccine. For 1,500 grams of this stuff, or kilo, sorry, a kilo, you get 1,500 doses mm. of the virus vaccine. Very efficient. But they're growing plants for science here. They are. But using the same technology, yeah. you say we can grow food for people. Correct. Mm. Well, that, actually, food for people came first, and then this came. Yeah. <laughs> so they got the idea from looking at the way high-tech greenhouses already produce food for people. Yeah. Now, the, the, the biggest jump is to make this into a tall building. Can That's it be <laughs> can it be done? It's already been done. So the answer is yes, it can be done. And it's being done. And it will be done more as the years progress. I think in another five years from now, the answer won't be, can it be done? It won't even be where it can be done. It'll be, gee, can I go visit one of those and have my next meal from there? And the answer would be yes. You're talking about tall buildings, skyscrapers full of food, not people. Well, you can live in those buildings too. You can have mixed use buildings that have some parts set aside for food production mm. and other parts for offices and things like this. But I would prefer to see the plants separated from the people. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Some tall buildings just for plants. Yeah. <laughs>